Hello guys and welcome to another Profile Tree video. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at web pages development. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So before we get started what exactly is web development and what does it refer to? So it's the process of creating, building and maintaining websites and web applications that are accessible over the internet. It involves a combination of programming, designing and managing various components to deliver a functional and user-friendly digital experience. Web development encompasses both front-end development, responsible for the user interface and user experience, and as well as that, back-end development, which handles server-side processes and database interactions. Front-end development focuses on creating the visible elements of a website that the user interacts with directly. It involves using technologies like HTML, hypertext markup language, for structuring the content, and CSS, cascading style sheets for styling a layout, and JavaScript for the interactivity and dynamic behavior. Now, front-end developers ensure that websites are responsive, visually appealing, and optimized for different devices such as desktop, tablets, and smartphones, but we'll get into the responsiveness later on in the video. Anyway, in front of us, we've got a development tool that UI and UX designers like to use, which is called Figma. Now, there are other ones out there as well. This is important in the development stages as a front-end developer will be working closely with a UI and UX designer. This is where you can start to picture how you, you want the website to look. So of course, we're gonna be creating a web page so this is how our front end web page is going to look. So we've got a hero section. We've got other sections as well. We've got a scroller. So this will tend to follow us all the way down to the bottom. And of course, we've got our blogs on the right side. And of course, we've got our footer. Now, the three main aspects of a website is your navigation, your section and your footer. That's all you would need to start off with until you start building up different parts and adding functionalities to it. And there's multiple ways of building a front end web page or web page. Now you could use a CMS, which is content management system. And now that, that'll be the terms of like Wix. You could use Squarespace, you could use Shopify. So it all depends on the project that you're going to be building. So whether it be a non-e-commerce site, an e-commerce site, try and research what CMS you want to use. If you want to be a little bit more complex and you've got a little, uh, a little bit of knowledge or a good amount of knowledge on coding, or if you have a web developer, it would be best to create and code the website yourself. And with the help of CMS as well, which is WordPress, you can use that to publish your coded website. But what you'd be coding is the actual theme. So there's plenty of ways to do that. And of course, then that's when you start looking into hosting and then server, and then you could publish that website directly. So that's how you would go about the development of a web page. Backend development deals with the server side operations that enables web applications to function. It involves writing server side code, handling databases, and managing user authentication and data security. Backend developers use various programming languages like PHP, Python, Ruby, Node.js, and Java, along with frameworks and libraries to hold and build the application's logic and functionality. So with the likes of this, this is all coded for PHP and we're running on an, a server called Nginx. And of course, as well as that, we're using MySQL for the database on this website. So you need three types of languages or three processes in order to have your backend development. Then of course you have full stack development which are proficient for both front-end and back-end development. And they're able to handle the entire web development process from designing the user interface to building the server-side applications and handling databases. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the actual design of the website, but they're there to 
build the actual template design of that website. We've had a look at the front end development, back end development, and even the full stack development. Now we'll take a look at some of the web development frameworks that you can use for your web pages development. React.js, which would be a great front end development framework. This has been developed by Facebook. React.js is a widely used JavaScript library for building user interfaces, and it also allows developers to create usable UI components and efficiently manage component states. So I would say that this is one of them. Now you can have a scroll through it, learn more about React.js, and as well as that, you can take a look at the docs, play about with it, see how you can download it. Uh, they do have their new one, which is React.dev. So this is the new one. So this is more or less how to do it. So this is an example of uh, an Axis Ozis game. So have a look at the framework, see if it's the coding language for you. Uh, so yes, we'll go ahead and move on to our next framework. Another great framework to use is Angular. Now this was developed and maintained by Google. Angular is a robust front end framework for building dynamic single page applications. And it provides a complete ecosystem for building complex web applications. So this might be another one for you, a little bit more complex compared to React.js. Take a look at the docs here, get an introduction, better understanding on it. And of course, how to download, download it as well. We also have a couple of the doc versions there, a few developer guides, and again, and understanding towards Angular. So that would be another framework to recommend. So we'll go ahead and move on to our next one. Our next one is VUE.js. And this is a progressive JavaScript framework that offers simplicity and flexibility. And it makes it suitable for both small projects and large scale applications. So another great framework to use. Of course, again, like all the other ones, we can get a quick overview on what this platform is like. So it builds on top of HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So that may be useful for you. We've got API as well. Uh, they also have a thing called the playground. So if you want to test out what the setup is like, this is more or less it. And if you want to get a clear understanding on the VUE.js, we can get a couple of the examples, a guide, tutorial. So it's a little bit more interactive compared to React.js and Angular gives you more of a welcome as a brand new user towards this framework. So we'll go ahead and move on to our last one, which is Ember.js. Now Ember.js is an opinionated front end framework that follows the convention over configuration principle, making it ideal for building ambitious web applications. So in terms of ambitious, of course, we're looking for a little bit more complex. So if you're building a more complex site, this might be the framework to use. Again, like the other ones, you have a guide for it as well. So we can take a look at the JS, there's Ember data, CLI. Uh, so we have all the basic commands that we need to use for command prompt. Uh, we've got routing, services, Ember data, Ember inspector. So all the things that you need in order to get started. Now, when, in terms of working with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, We've got a little bit more insight towards those. So we can actually look at the links towards these and just read more onto it. And if you are new to JavaScript, uh, you can have a couple more readable resources through Mozilla's JavaScript tutorial. They've got javascript.info and ES6 for humans. So overall, another great framework to use, again, uh, this is more for the ambitious web applications as stated. So in terms of that, this may be the more complex framework to use out of the four that we've talked about. So now that we've discussed the web development frameworks that you can use, we'll go ahead and talk about the responsiveness for web design. So we'll just use a CMS platform to demonstrate responsiveness. In terms of responsiveness, it's basically when a website is enabled to adapt to different screen sizes and for different devices. So for this one, this would be for a desktop. 
And if we go to the mobile view, then of course that'll be for the mobile. Then you will have a couple of options for tablet as well. So that's important. Make sure you get the screen sizing right for the tablet. Now say that you weren't using a CMS application or developer tool. And if you are hard coding it, then you have to make sure that you have the right sizing on your CSS. So if you're coding it and you're using CSS, make sure that everything's correct in ter terms of the PX size. Uh, that's when you have to double check and make sure you see your screen sizes. And that's when you start tampering and messing about with the actual uh, window. So you can see here that I've restored it down. It's uh, shortened. And if I expand it out, it should try to come out as well. You can see like that. Now, the better way to demonstrate this is to use our actual website. So if I minimize this, you can see that it's changed sizing. And if I increase it, you can see that the actual words and paragraphs are changing in size. You can see that some of the content is shrinking as well. If I make it really, really small, so this is the mobile version, you can see that we've got a ham hamburger menu. So just take all of those into consideration. Our next one here is performance optimization. Now this is an important step of the web page development. As if you're looking to reduce the page load times, this would be the time to do it. This is the time also to optimize some images as well as using caching. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you're ready to go live and you're just double checking the performance and state of the website, this would be it. And just to further explain, we actually have a thing called the inspect tool. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that now. So if I right click, you can see that I've got my inspect tool and I could actually see the performance of the website using Lighthouse. I can analyze the page load and it audits it for me. And once that is 100%, you can see that 70% of the mobile pages, uh, it's going over them. So we should have some numbers here, but for some reason it hasn't appeared. So we'll try to rerun that and see if we can get a better result. So Lighthouse analyze the page load. So a better result this time. You can see our best practices is at 100, which is great. SEO being 102, accessibility at 96, and our performance being at 55. Now we can see that Chrome extensions negatively impact the pages loads performance, which is perfectly normal. So that's the performance. Another way to actually check whether the site is doing well is to check the page insights. Now this is free from Google. Now all you would need to do is enter the web page URL. So we'll go back to our URL here, type it in, enter it in and analyze. So that'll run an analysis. We could see from the mobile that everything has gone well. We'll take a look at the performance issues if there is any. So interaction, uh, interaction to next paint 46 ms. So it's working perfectly fine. You can see the performance is at 94 for mobile, which is great. That's what we want to see. Uh, in terms for the desktop, we're running it at around 79. And that's, of course, uh, understandable due to the fact that we may have some performance issues with not only the device, but also the multiple apps that's running on the device itself or other occurring issues. It could possibly be on the site as well. So that would be how you would optimize and check for the page load times. Now, in terms of optimizing the images, maybe you want to try to compress the files a little bit better. So if it's say at, a, at 100 MB, you may want to minimize it, or if it's going to be like a small image, you may as well try to reduce the quality of it. So that'll save you some um, storage space as well. And as well as that, you may want to overview your code. So take a look at your code, see whether you need to decrease the amount of code you've done. So say that there's multiple lines on that particular piece of code. Uh, it could be like a, sh a shopping cart, or it could be a function of some sort. Try to reduce it, 
So an example would be if else, and there's multiple ways to reduce that actual code into three lines instead of using multiple lines at a time. So now that we've taken a look at the different stages towards web page development, we've had a look at front end development, back end development, web development frameworks, responsive web design, performance optimization, what other key aspects is there to see? Our other ones would be to do with SEO. So in terms of that, you can actually use the likes of SEMrush in order to gain those keywords. And if you take a look at our website, we're mainly to do with the actual web design and digital marketing, as you can see. So we want to go ahead and pluck out as much keywords from web design, digital marketing, and as well as digital marketing, um, we could try to pluck out more keywords from content marketing services. And of course, with the additional help of blog posts, that's where we'll do best in terms of SEO. So the better your SEO, the more ranking you get, and the more ranking you get means that you're more visible towards search engine results. And just to demonstrate this, if I go on Google and I'll search up profile tree, you can see we're at the very, very start of the search engine result. Next up would be LinkedIn, which is our social media. We have Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've even got one for the government. So that's just company information. We've got our YouTube, we've got Instagram. And if we go to the next one, we've got um, more information on Crunchbase, uh, Navigator app, even some from Trustpilot. And if we take a look at the images, we should have pretty much the first results. You could see other companies as well that has more or less talked about Profile Tree. We've got some videos on Profile Tree uh, itself. So a couple of linked ones on Google Images. If we take a look at videos, we should be able to see ones for our YouTube channel. So there's a few from our YouTube channel, as you can see, and ones from our actual main site. So that all links up to the different pages. You've got one there for marketing agency services. So that'll be in Profile Tree itself. Uh, this one here, there's the YouTube one. You can see that. So more or less, if you invest your time into SEO and you do the best practices, you'll see that you're more visible towards the ranking in search engines. Another thing that you want to take into account for is web security. So explore web security measures, including HTTPS, secure authentication and protection against common vulnerabilities like SQL injection and cross-site scripting, XSS attacks. So if we take a look at SSL, there are a couple of different certificates that are available and there are a couple of areas where you can pluck them out of. So we do have one for Cloudflare. You can go ahead and take a look at the pricing uh, for the security and performance. So this is more or less where you want to go anyway and compare the prices. Of course, some will be for free. You've got pro, business, enterprise. So depending on your business or depending on your website, uh, when you have built your web pages. So do take into consideration for HTTPS. All websites will be HTTP and the S will be your security. That's when you know that all your information, if you are running an e-commerce site, will be encrypted information being passed over. It's important to have SSL security anyway. When you have a e-commerce website, as you are dealing with more sensitive information for the internet, so really do take into account for the SSL. And as well as that, as I've mentioned, you are protecting yourself against the common vulnerabilities, uh, malware as well, SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Now that's three of the other things that you don't want to have. But again, we did cover the SSL in more detail in an another video. So I would highly recommend to check that out. But there you have it. That would be more or less it for the web pages development. When you are reaching the final stages, of course, start to consider the testing and debugging and then have a look more into the content management as well as 
the frameworks. So as I've mentioned before, before you start to begin a development on a web page, if you're not so technical with coding, maybe you want to consider a content management system. And there's the likes of WordPress, Joomla, you've got Drupal. You've also got other ones there like Wix, Squarespace, Shopify. So quite a few in simplifying web page creation and management. And of course, take a look at some of the best practices and tips before you get stuck into web page development. That'll ease the stress when you are going through them, especially when you're learning more into the code organization. You've got project structure as well and documentation to keep you in the right path during your web development. But just remember when you are creating a web page, each software has its unique features and capabilities. So ultimately it all depends on your personal preferences, your project requirements and the development environment. So there you have it guys, that pretty much reaches the end of the video for web page development. If you did enjoy the video, please do leave us a comment in the comment section below. We'd like to hear what you think. And if you're maybe looking into the development of a web page or a website, why not check out our website at www.profiletree.com and feel free to get in contact with us to learn more information about web development. But as I say, that reaches the end of the video. So I'll see you guys for the next one. Thank you very much for watching.